What's going on guys? I hope you're all doing well today. Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to dive in on the character of Bix Kaleen. Now this is interesting because this is a character that we have no history of within Star Wars. And I think this isn't going to be the only Star Wars project that she appears in. We're going to dive into her backstory of Cassian, how the actress got cast and the rest of it. So before we jump in, remember to subscribe to the channel if you're new. Leave a like on the video, it's massively appreciated. So this is a really good and well put together article on the uh, Hollywood Reporter that I found. Really goes into a lot of detail about the character, about the actress, getting the role in Star Wars, but also little bits in there about what this could look like for that character in Star Wars going forwards. It goes on to say, Andor star Adria Ajona talks Bix and Cassian's backstory, why the show works, and of course other bits as well. So at the height of the pandemic, Andor star Adria Ajona flew all the way to London to audition alongside Diego Luna, and within the span of 10 minutes, series creator Tony Gilroy welcomed her to Star Wars. Ajona plays Bix Kaleen, who's a mechanic, and one of Cassian's oldest friends on the planet Ferrix. So we kind of established that part already from the show. By the way, guys, there are spoilers in this article, so if you haven't seen Andor just yet, it might be a good idea to watch that first. You have been warned. In their first scene together at Bix's small business, it's suggested that the two characters have untapped feelings for one another, resulting in Bix's current love interest, Tim, Tim, to jealously betray her by reporting Cassian to Imperial security. According to Ajona, the backstory for Bix and Cassian's relationship is still up in the air. They're childhood friends, and there's this mystery of, were they ever really in love? Jonah tells Hollywood Reporter. So it's really kind of unknown, but through their long friendship, trust has been built and broken and then built up and then broken again. But she's always ended up picking him over everything and it kind of sucks. So yeah, it does sound like to me that she still is in love with Cassian, even deep down, even though she's got a boyfriend already at the moment, which, you know, happens in real life. Andor's first three episodes have now premiered on Disney+. Plus and the response has been overwhelmingly positive since the series has welcomed departure from the previous Star Wars shows. But Jonah credits one individual for this new direction. So I'd just like to say, it's not a welcomed departure for me. I mean, I really enjoy Star Wars shows, like the really Star Wars shows, like The Mandalorian and, and the rest of it like that, with them types of characters, Luke Skywalker and whatnot. But it is a nice change, but I don't want to lose what we have before. You know, the, the real Star Wars is Star Wars kind of stuff. So the decisions that are made throughout the show with the writing, the sets, the costumes and the worlds are very much Tony Gilroy going, I think it's this, I think it's that, I think it's that, and I think it's that. And that's why Andor works, because we had a vicious leader, says Ajona. In a recent spoiler conversation with THR, Ajona also recalls the story of how her mother gave her the positive reinforcement she needed to fly to London and audition during a precarious stretch of the pandemic. This is quite cool, this bit. Well, we can finally say the name Bix Colleen. Thank God I've been wanting to get a tattoo of Bix. I know you put it off because of spoiler fears, but are you still planning to get it? Yeah, I'm going to do it. I'm going to get some sort of Star Wars tattoo, but I'm not sure what. When we spoke in April, you described Bix as a practical woman. Were you referring to the fact that she's a mechanic of sorts? Yeah, so it's hard to talk about her at such an early stage. I mean, she is incredibly practical and fearless and bold and loyal, even sometimes to her own detriment. She cares so deeply about the people around her, and it really takes her on a journey. So I'm in love with her in a way. I just think she's the coolest. So she is a really, uh, really interesting character, to be fair. What can you tell me about her history with Cassian? What makes her so protective of him? Now, I know they've had a long friendship, they're childhood friends, and there's this mystery of, were they ever really in love? Were they ever together? Is there jealousy between Cassian and Tim? Is this a love triangle? Because before Tim snuffed it. So it really is kind of unknown, but through their long friendship, trust has been built, and then broken, and then built up, and then broken again. But Bix still cares deeply for Cassian. He's incredibly complex and complicated, and he always seems to get himself in trouble or do things in a different way. And like I said, Bix is so practical. She has her own business, and she is finally running it the way she wants to run it. She's at the top of her game. She finally has stability. But every time Cassian comes in, he just disrupts it a little bit. So she almost wishes better for Cassian. And she's incredibly protective over him. But she always ends up picking him over everything. And it kind of sucks. Yeah, so Cassian is unreliable in a lot of ways, the report says. But Tim is a guy who would jump through hoops for Bix to a fault. So did she settle for Tim because she was tired of Cassian's unpredictability? So Ajona says, I personally think so. Tim is safe. Tim is responsible. They function well together. 
So we all know that the people that have settled in relationships for that safety, but they're not really truly happy in it. So again, this is what Tony Gilroy wanted to do. He wanted to really relate it to real anxieties, real problems, you know, real life kind of stuff, which he's doing during this show, but it's not overbearing. It's just about the right amount, which is good. They run a business together. Maybe she had hopes and dreams that it could have been Cassian, but who knows? It's just impossible with him. Hence that line that Cassian gives Bix and Bix responds, I don't ask you about your personal life. So he could really feel the tension in that moment. Oh, he doesn't like that Tim is in my life. <laughs> but he comes and goes a lot. That's his way of protecting the people that he loves. For anyone who may have listened to the interview previously, basically there's a story on how she got cast in Andor. And it's actually quite nice. She says... Oh my god, I did tell you that. I didn't tell that story to too many people. So I sent a tape in and then I got called to go to London in the middle of the pandemic. So I called my mum and I was like, Mum, they want me to go to London, but there's this thing called COVID. What should I do? I was just so scared. I'm a true hypochondriac at heart. I was like, what is going on with the world? And she basically said, Adria, you're a swan. You could swim in a lake of shit and not get stained. Let the force be with you, my daughter. And then she hung up the phone on me. Is the mum a Star Wars fan? I think so, which is pretty cool. So I ended up going to London and I met Tony and Diego in person. We did one scene together and Tony stood up and was like, Diego, meet your co-star. Adria, meet your co-star. And I was like, I'm sorry, what? And Tony was like, welcome to Star Wars. I can imagine him do it very theatrically as well. And then my heart just drops. That whole testing period only lasted 10 minutes. And I did the scene once, plus another quick little scene. And all of a sudden, I was in Star Wars. It was the wildest thing. And it doesn't speak to my acting abilities at all, even though they are pretty good. I think it speaks more to Tony's ability to see something and go, that's right. The decisions that are made throughout the show, with the writing, the sets, the costumes and the worlds, very much Tony going, I think it's that, I think it's that, and I think it's that. So that's why it works, because we had a vicious leader. Which is pretty cool as well, because, you know, Star Wars does have a bit of a history recently of coming up with ideas and not following through on them because they decide they don't work. So it's nice to see that you have someone working on this show who has one vision in mind, and that's the vision they're going to fulfill. That's one credit I've got for, you know, for Ryan Johnson as well, to be fair. He knew in his head the Star Wars story he wanted to tell, and he went and made it. Now, we might not all agree with that story, but for him personally, he made exactly the film he wanted to make. Tony Gilroy is making exactly the show he wants to make. So you've got to respect him for that, at least. Bix helps Cassian meet Stellan Skarsgård's character, Lufen Rael, and he's likely going to be the one to put Cassian on the trajectory towards becoming the rebel hero who steals the Death Star plans in Rogue One. And that effort ultimately led to Luke Skywalker to destroy the first Death Star and save the galaxy. So technically, Bix had his hand in saving the galaxy too. Have you thought about Bix's role in this grand scheme of Star Wars? So yeah, this is really laying the early groundworks for what we see in the original trilogy. So without this happening now, technically, the original trilogy events wouldn't have happened the way they did. Now, I have, I really have. When Bix sent that message to Rail, I thought about what that meant and what it meant for her future, Cassian's future, and the future of the galaxy itself. But it really lies more on Cassian than Bix. Specifically, Bix is a little bit unaware of what she's actually getting herself into, but she'll find out sooner or later. So I don't think she's exactly aware of what is happening or the connection to what is about to happen, but she realises it pretty quick though. So I'm kind of thinking Bix maybe joins the rebellion as well. So episode 3 ends in tragedy as Tim gets stitches and dies in front of Bix. Cassian also flees Ferrix with Lufen. It's safe to say you'll be back at some point, right? I can't tell you that, it would be wild for me to do that. What's your favourite episode number? Episode 1. Um, well, you're good at this. Yeah, you've got to watch it. Okay, so, yeah, I think this character's going to be back, you know, obviously in the interview, you know, meet your co-star. Um, I mean, she's not going to be an actress that sort of, like, fizzles out, which I think could happen with some of the others we've seen in the first couple of episodes, when Cassian goes on this grand journey, meets these characters like Mon Mothma, maybe gets caught up with Imperial forces, maybe they come to Ferrix, I think they will, um, on the back of what's happened. So there's a lot to dive into on there. Now it's really interesting that she is keeping tight-lipped on that, but you wouldn't expect anything else to be honest. I personally think she will appear in other episodes, she's, you know, it says it in the interview there, she was called a co-star, that's not really someone that typically appears in like the first little bit of the uh, show and the series and then disappears i think she's going to come back and i think it's probably going to be cassian going back to ferrix maybe to help out with the imperials 
once they've arrived on the back of what's happened with his escape um, and maybe Bix goes with Cassian at that point. But it's really interesting because I know some of these actors that are involved with Andor have apparently been told that their characters could be brought into other Star Wars projects going forwards. So it's really interesting to see what that is. But of course, you know, we've got a, a season and a bit of Andor still to go yet before any of that happens, I'd imagine. So remember to subscribe to the channel if you're new, leave a like on the video. I'll catch you in the next one. And may the force be with you.